Hey everybody, this is Mr. Ainsworth, and we're going to get right into volume review number four here at the end of our course. Go over all kinds of methods like the disk method, shell method, maybe even washer method here. So let's take a look at a problem here. Our first example is about finding the volume of a pontoon, where the pontoon is being made up of the shape shown in this figure here. And the pontoon is designed by rotating the graph y equals 1 minus x squared over 16 from negative 4 to 4, basically, about the x-axis. Okay, where x and y are measured in feet, and we want to find the volume of the pontoon. Well, this is a volume of solid revolution here, and what we want to do is graph the boundary region and rotate it around the x-axis here, okay, because I mean, that's what we're supposed to do, is we're supposed to rotate around the x-axis. So the very first thing we ought to probably do is find the x-intercepts and verify that it's from negative 4 to 4 and to do that you set y equal to 0. So let's uh, let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at 0 equals 1 minus x squared over 16. Okay, I'm going to bring this term over here. We've got x squared divided by 16 equals 1. That means x squared is equal to 16. Well, lo and behold, x is equal to plus or minus 4. Alright, when x equals 0, y is 1. So it's up here at 1, and let's say that's 1 here, and this is uh, negative 4, and this is positive 4, so the scale on the x-axis is a little bit different than the y-axis right here. That's okay. And we're going to draw the, the parabola here. Now this region here is going to be rotated ab about the x-axis, that's what we want to do, to get this pontoon shape up here. Okay, and uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to reflect it down below here and just kind of sketch it. Okay, it's not the exact shape as above because I changed the scale, but that's okay. Get the idea. I'm going to draw a vertical cross section here to represent a disc. Okay, you'll see a disc right there. I'm going to take this cross section, rotate it around the x-axis here, and it forms a disc with thickness dx here. And the radius is seen right here, r, where r, the radius, is equal to the function height, the y value, which is given by 1 minus x squared divided by 16. Okay, so the volume of this, as you remember, is pi r squared times the thickness, dx. So my, my disk volume here, volume of, let's say, one disk, disk volume, you will do pi times r squared in general. So in this case, it's going to be pi times 1 minus x squared divided by 16 times my th squared times my thickness dx. Now I need to integrate it from negative 4 to 4. So my volume of my solid now becomes uh, the integral from negative 4 to 4 of pi times my radius squared times my thickness. I could simplify that a little bit by using a little bit of symmetry here because parabolas are symmetrical about its vertex, which is at 0, 1. And I could say this is going to be equivalent to 2 times the integral. I'm going to plot the pi as well. From 0 to 4, of 1 minus x squared divided by 16 squared, 16 dx. Okay? Uh, once you integrate that, you're going to get uh, 60, well, let's, let's yeah, I'll let you handle the algebra there. You're going to get 64 pi fifteenths, and if you entered in your calculator here, you should get about 13.4 uh, cubic feet, so feet cubed here, because the measurements are in feet. Okay, it's up to you to integrate. Uh, you know, square the binomial, integrate that, evaluate it from zero to four, and get 64 pi fifteenths. Okay, you can also check the volume by integration on your calculator and see that these two, the exact value and the decimal, are actually equal. All right, but more important is the setup here. Get your intersection points, graph the parabola, bound the, bound the region here, and then rotate it across the x-axis or about the x-axis here so that you get this pontoon shape, okay, which is a solid revolution. Our next problem, problem number two, we're given y equals x squared plus 4, and we want to set up and evaluate an interval that gives the volume of the solid generated by revolving the plane around the y-axis here, okay, indicated by this arrow here. So we're going to take this and I'm going to reflect it first over here on the on the left. Here, and then this region on in blue it gets reflected onto the yellow. Alright, the cross section shown, this vertical cross section here, 
represents the cross section for the shell method here. Shell method. So I'm going to draw that over here. Draw one representative shell. You can see it right there. Height H, radius right here. There's R. Now the radius is, you know, some some distance x right here. So r is equal to some distance x. My thickness is uh, dx here. There's my thickness, dx. Difference between two x values there. And what I need to do is figure out a shell volume. Now the shell volume depends on the radius and the height. And the height is the upper y value minus the lower value. So h is equal to upper minus lower in general, because it's vertical in this case. Uh, it's at height 4. Okay, so it's going to be 4 minus the function value here, 4 minus y. But what's y equal to? Well, it's equal to x squared uh, plus 4. So the height is going to be 4 minus the quantity of x squared plus 4. Of course, you want to simplify that before you do anything. Oh, it's not 4. I didn't say, say it correctly. I didn't read it correctly here. It's height 8. Sorry. Let me change that. couldn't read the graph here. You're at 8 right there. Height 8. Uh, so it's going to be 8 minus y, or 8 minus the quantity of x squared minus 4, which gives me a height of, uh, well, if you distribute through the 4, 8 minus 4 is 4, so you get 4 minus x squared. There's your height as a function of x, and then the radius, of course, is a function of x too. And here it depends on where you draw the cross section. Okay, once you do that, then you get a shell volume. So my shell volume is equal to uh, the circumference, which is 2 pi r times my height h times my thickness dx. That's, it. That's what it is in general, circumference times height times thickness. So I have 2 pi times x down times my height, which is 4 minus x squared times my thickness. And that's the volume of one shell. You want to integrate that uh, from 0 to 2. There's a bounds right here from 0 to 2, so my volume of my solid after I revolve it here is the integral from 0 to 2 of 2 pi x. I should probably distribute through. Uh, let's do that. And actually, you could pull out the 2 pi as well. So I've got uh, 4x minus x cubed, all right, and dx. You want to integrate that, of course. So let's do that. Uh, volume equals 2 pi times the integral of 4x, which would be 4x squared divided by 2, or 2x two, uh, squared, all right, minus x to the fourth divided by 4, all evaluated from 0 to 2. Okay? When you do that, you get uh, 2 pi times 2 times 2 squared, 2 times 4 is 8, minus 16 divided by 4 is 4, minus uh, 0 here, 2 pi times 0 is 0. 2 pi times 4 is 8 pi, so you get 8 pi cubic units for your total volume. You can also check with the calculator too. Uh, I would enter that in, uh, enter into the, your TI-84, okay, and check result. Okay, obviously check it with the 8 pi. 8 pi is uh, over, 8 times is uh, 24, so it's over 24. And, you know, compare the, what the calculator gives you with 8 pi, and then make sure you did your arithmetic uh, work correctly there. Okay? Next problem, what we want to do is take this region here, which is given by y equals x. Uh, we want to use the shell method here and revolve it around the x-axis. Okay? So it's going to go across here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect it over here to show... Uh, what it looks like in three dimensions here. Show the shell. You should be able to do this, by the way. Okay, there's one shell. Okay, now the radius is this way here. Radius. The uh, thickness is dy. Height seen horizontally here. The radius is some y value. And I need to write this integral in respect to y because the thickness is dy. So it's a dy integral here. So I've got to solve for x in terms of y. And it's already done that, so it's a pretty simple function here, y equals x. Okay, so my 
my height though is a horizontal distance and that is found by taking this x value and subtracting this x value so it's right minus left. So let's keep that in mind here and when you do that uh, you're going to get, you see this is at 2, that's 2 right there, and it's going to be 2 minus this x value which is y. Okay, so the, your height there is uh, 2 minus y and your radius is y. So what you do is you, you write your height and radius as functions of y because this is a dy integral because of the fact that the thickness is a differential in y here, dy. Then after you do that, you figure out the volume of one shell and then integrate from, let's say, well, from 0 to 2. And these are your bounds here. So from 0 to 2, all the way up here. So my shell volume, once again, uh, is circumference 2 pi r which is y times my height 2 minus y times my thickness dy. Uh, my total volume is found by integrating from 0 to 2 this time of my circumference 2 pi y times 2 minus y times dy. So let's figure that out. My total volume is now going to be 2 pi uh, times the integral from 0 to 2 of 2y minus y squared dy. All I did there was distribute through okay, a couple times. And what do you get when you integrate? Well, you get 2 pi times uh, y squared minus y cubed divided by 3 evaluated from 0 to 2. And when you evaluate at 2, you get 2 pi times 4 minus 8 thirds minus 2 pi times 0, which is going to cancel out. 4 minus 2 and 2 thirds is 1 and 2 thirds, so I get 2 pi minus 1 and, uh, excuse me, 1 and a third here. 4 minus 2 and 2 thirds is 1 and 1 third, which is 4 thirds, so I get 2 pi times 4 thirds, which is uh, 8 pi thirds cubic units, and there's my total volume of my solid revolution using the shell method course, you've got to check this with the calculator, enter the original integral in using function integration and then compare with 8 pi thirds, which is a little rate and you'll get the same value. Always good to check. Alright, now for the fun one here, number six, or number four, excuse me, in our, ours. This is a tough one here because of the bounds. Alright, a lot of arithmetic. Okay, so let's see what we can do. Uh, first of all, we want to set up and evaluate an integral that gives the volume of a solid by revolving the region about the x-axis. Keep that in mind. So this way. I'm going to reflect it so you can see it. All it needs is a rough sketch here. So this blue region is going to revolve around the x-axis becoming the yellow region. And as you go around, it's kind of like a uh, ball bearing with a cylindrical hole through it with radius uh, 2. So a little radius is 2 here from 0 to 2 is 2. So that's the inner radius. Uh, I'm talking about a washer here, because that this is in essence a washer. Okay. If I went lateral or horizontal cross sections, we could approach it with a shell, I suppose. But I'm going to use the washer method. Uh, the thickness is dx. The inside radius is constantly two. The outside radius is right here, big R. And that, my friends, depends on y. That y is given by the function here. So big R, the outside radius, is a y value and it's equal to 4 minus x squared divided by 4. The level radius is constantly 2. So my washer volume, uh, the volume of one washer is going to be equal to uh, pi times big R squared minus little r squared times your thickness, dx in general. But in this situation, it's going to be pi times big R squared, which is this going to be 4 minus x squared, 4 squared minus 2 squared times the thickness dx. What you're going to have to do is square the binomial and simplify this before you attempt to integrate here. Okay, okay so here we go guys. When you square a binomial, this is how it's done. You square the first term, 4 squared is 16, then you multiply the terms 4 times negative x squared over 4 is just negative x squared, and then you double it. That's a minus 2x squared 
and then you square the last term, so you get x to the fourth divided by 16. Then you square the two, of course, and you get four. Multiply that by a thickness. And there you go. You got to get good at that stuff. 16 minus four is 12, so pi times 12 minus uh, two x squared plus x to the fourth divided by 16 times thickness. That right there is one washer volume. Okay, one of them. Now you got to integrate it from left to right because our cross sections are vertical and we're slicing from left to right. So what is this point? Because it's not negative three. And what is this point? Because it's not three. The way you find your your bounds, you know, a equals something and b equals something here is by intersecting. You have to find the intersection points. The most common mistake people make uh, is by assuming that it's three, negative three and three here because it's close. And the graph kind of indicates it looks like that, but it's really not. What you have to do is you have to uh, intersect the functions and solve your system by substitution. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's substitute two and four y and let's solve two equals four minus x squared divided by four. See what we get. Let's subtract two, excuse me, subtract four. And you get this here multiply by 4 and you get negative 8 equals negative x uh, to the second power. That means you got 8 equals x squared and that means you got plus or minus root 8 equals x. Or in other words, uh, plus or minus uh, 2 root 2 equals x. Now root 2 is 1.4 times 2 is about uh, 2.8. So this is plus or minus 2.8 and you can see how it kind of was close because we thought it would, most people think it's negative three and three for the bounds. In fact, I saw that in class the other day when we took this quiz, and uh, it's not. So you gotta understand that it's actually positive negative two root two. So when you find your volume of the solid, you have to integrate from negative two root two to positive two root two of all this. Pi times 12 minus two x squared plus x to the fourth divided by 16 dx, and you have to do this and uh, deal with the arithmetic. So here's how I did it. I used symmetry here. I noticed that the right side of the parabola is symmetrical to the left side, so what I did was I evaluated this integral from 0 to 2 root 2, and I doubled it. So this is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to 2 root 2 of pi, actually I should have pulled pi out, times 12 minus 2x squared plus x to the fourth divided by 16 dx and I evaluated this. That's what I did. Okay, so what did I get? Well, uh, I get 2 pi times the integral of 12, which is 12x, minus the integral of 2x squared, which is 2x cubed divided by 3, plus x to the fifth divided by 5 times 16, or 80. All right, evaluate it from 0 to 2 root 2. And all I have to do is evaluate it at 2 root 2, uh, because everything evaluated at zero is zero. All right, so let's see what we get. I'm going to start over here. So we have two pi, this is volume now, times, let me see, 12 times two root two is 24 root two, uh, minus two times the two root two to the third power. So I'm going to step this out here. Two root two to the third power divided by three plus to root 2 to the fifth power divided by 80, and then minus 2 pi times everything at 0, which is 0. So that's going to cancel out. So what is the total volume here? So 2 pi times 24 root 2. Now, 2 cubed is 8, and root 2 times root 2 is 2 times another root 2 is 2 root 2. Okay? So 2 cubed is 8 again. All right, and then when I multiply three root twos together, I get two root two, and eight times two root two is sixteen root two, times two is thirty-two root two. So thirty-two root two divided by three plus, and this right here is two to the fifth is thirty-two. Two root two to the fifth power is root two times root two, which is two. And I have another pair of them that's two times two, which is four times root two. Okay, I'll divide it by 80. And that's going to give me 128 here. But you know what, we could, uh, instead of uh, multiplying these two, we can simplify this, you know, it might be easier. 
In fact, it will be easier. So let's start simplifying right now. Okay, look at that. 4 80th, 1 20th. And let's do it again. Let's simplify some more. These are divisible by uh, 4. Um, yeah. So 8 uh, fifths. So what do I get? I get 2 pi times 24 root 2 minus 32 root 2, whoops, root 2, divided by 3, plus 8 root 2 divided by 5. Ooh, there we go. And the common denominator 15. So uh, 2 pi times, okay, and I multiply this first one by 15 15, like so. 15 15. And 15 times 24. Uh, that's blue now. That's 360. So 360 root 2, 15th minus. Multiply this by 5 fifths here, and this one by 3 thirds here. Okay, so I get 5 times 32. That's 160. So 160 root 2 divided by 15 plus 8 times 3, 24 root 2 divided by 15, and I just combine all this mumbo jumbo, and I get 2 pi. Uh, times 224 root 2 divided by 15. When you combine all these fractions here, 2 times 224 is 448. So you get 448 pi root 2 all divided by 15 cubic units. Holy smoke. All right, and that's approximately equal to, when you do it, 132.69 cubic units when you do on a calculator. So from here to here, you evaluate, okay, on the calculator. So check, how do you do that? Well, you enter in this original integral, uh, let's see here. I would enter this one here, the original one. Uh, this one, this one here, okay? You use this for the, okay, enter this on calc. So enter this on T84 and check, okay? check answer. Okay, wow, that was a big problem here, but there it is. Now, once again, uh, this is a video, so you can replay this as many times as you want and practice like a madman, and not only be able to set it up by hand, but be able to do all this arithmetic by hand and get really good at it. You know, because calculus is, uh, it's, there's a lot of concept involved, and you have to understand the concepts, but you also have to be extremely good at all the algebra, the arithmetic, the fractions, the, the squaring, the rooting, and all that to be successful in calculus. So you got to practice that and get good at it. And people are successful in calculus because not only do they understand the concepts, but they mastered algebra one and two. On the other hand, you know people don't uh, don't pass calculus because they're not good at the arithmetic. Okay, so you got to practice this, get good at it, do this problem multiple times, and if you can do something like this, you can do anything. All right. Good luck on that, and I'll see you tomorrow.